All right, hello. Hey, it's Brian with HSC and Simon hey, as we're well. We're in person this time. I know we are. This standing, is pretty awesome. Actually standing. Virtual. Right. Virtu no, we don't have to do this. Oh, we don't. Anymore. Well, actually, I think we. Oh, oh it's no. Still flipped. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can't win. Um, so we are going to walk through the P150 uh, and uh, do a quick preview with y'all. So some Im really important things to know about that first is. Uh, a, XAG, typical fashion, and I, I love that they do this, will run this model first in China. It's being sold and distributed right now in China and mainland. And uh, folks really put it through the paces out there and they test it and there are always bugs and problems and XAG works on all of that stuff in their domestic market first. And then it gets rolled out to the rest of the world. Now, some things that are really important about that is first, it's going to need FCC approval, and then it's going to need FAA approval before it gets here. And then it gets on these really big ships, mm -hmm. not through certain parts of the world right, right. now. Uh, but um, it, it's we likely will not see this or even have it for sale until the late, late, late part of 2024. So as we go through this, we're going to talk about some things that have people that might be like, I'm not planning to buy until fall or winter 2024 anyway. Should I wait for this platform? And then we'll talk about some pointers about some folks that might really value from waiting and some folks that probably will just buy the current model right now, which is the P100 Pro. Um, yeah. All right. You ready to jump in? Yeah, we'll get started. Cool. Yeah. All right, sweet. So the P150, I mean, from everything that we see is really an evolution of the P100 Pro. It's going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to have more capacity and yep. some more options. Um, but some of the big things that I see are XAG has um, changed the controller and control system. It looks like the software is going to be slightly different. Okay. Um, some additional features are going to be added. So I'm really excited about it. It looks like a very interesting platform. Right on. Also, uh, we are currently visiting XAG's website, um, but the Chinese version. So forgive Google's translation of these things. Yes. Okay, so some stuff might look kind of weird. It, it will look weird. It's being actively translated that's right. some in real stuff time. Yep. looks a little funny. All so. right, so we're first going to talk about capacity because that's what's on everyone's mind. So we're going from 13.2 gallons up to 15.8 gallons. Um, and then there's another capacity tank that's currently available in the Chinese market. And this is also planned for the T60. It's weird. There's this one capacity that's marketed and advertised, but then there's another larger tank option. And we've got some theories about why that might be. Now, these are theories. We don't know that this is true. So what do you think are some of the reasons that could be? Well, you can see here listed on the site, it shows 60 liters, which is about 15.8 gallons, and then an optional 70 liter system. So right. some theories that we have about this, and like you said, the DJI upcoming T60 is marketed the same exact way. That's right. So one could be that there is an additional certification in the Chinese domestic market that's required to carry this additional uh, uh, over 60 liter capacity. Like for the pilots flying For those. the pilots, yep. like a license. Yep. Good. Uh, the other theory is that it could be designed, the, the larger tank could be designed only for higher rate applications because you'll see this drone is also available with two or four nozzles and uh -huh. actually the DJI T60 is the same. Uh, that would make more sense. So then folks that need that higher application, those higher flow rates, those higher application mm -hmm. rates, would benefit from having more nozzles, larger capacity, uh, because we're going to get into some of the limitations why these larger capacities really are driven to benefit folks that have higher application rates. Uh, and we're going to talk about that too. That's right. um, so uh, flow rate is still looking right under eight gallons per minute, uh, 7.92 gallons per minute. Again, running, like Simon had just said, uh, two or four nozzles set up. Right, so it's a little Good. bit higher output rate than the current P100 Pro, which is yep. uh, a little bit under that. That's um, right. The Interestingly, the rated swath that they show uh, is about the same as what they advertise with the P100 Pro. That's which right. We'll come into play here in a minute. Yeah, um, that's right. With the, the overall efficiency of the drone. Looks like the same micron size as well, so same droplet size. Yep. Nice, uh, very fine, all the way up to um, uh, kind of a medium or an extra coarse nozzle there. It looks like a 400 microns. I have to look up the VMD chart, but right. cool. All yeah. right, let's keep on going. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's so, see. Yep. So we there's our spray swath here. Um, now let's talk about again. This is some of this is lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So on the seating side, um, which is right below. Yeah, it's a little it, bit lower. Yeah. Oh, water pressure sensor type. Well, oh, I was looking that. at this. I think this yeah. may be another translation thing. 
from the pictures I see here, the, the pump system uh, still uses a peristaltic pump Great. like we like we're familiar with yep. with XAG. Um, the sensor system, I think this is the same as what's currently on the P100 Pro. It's like an optical, possibly uh, a pressure sensor. Maybe be. it's a translation yep. thing, or maybe it is different. It's it's kind of hard to tell. Right. Um, but um, yeah, it looks like they're improving the the sensor level sensor mechanism. Yep. The nozzle system honestly looks pretty it much looks identical. The same as yep. what we currently have. So really, no surprises uh, there. But you'll notice it says allowing even larger flow sprays to be atomized evenly. Right. So one of the challenges that we have right now on that P100 Pro, when you dial up larger droplets, but a high flow rate, sometimes you're flooding the discs and you get these big slobber droplets rolling off those discs. Right. Because when XAG went from the P100 to the P100 Pro, they didn't increase the, the surface area of the discs, even mm -hmm. though they significantly increased the flow rates. Right. Uh, so that's good to hear right. or good to see. And in this case, even if the discs are the same, they are increasing the surface area because they have two more nozzles. That's true. So it's twice the yep. surface area. Yeah, good. I'm also digging these new transparent graphics. Yeah, they're cool. For renderings, I've never seen that before. Look really nice. Come out. Looks like they've got a different type of uh, lid oh, here too, which looks is kind like of a flow through lid. Yep. Ah, looks that's like awesome. From the factory, a flow right, through lid, which is awesome. Good, good so dosing port design. That. Pop up cover yeah. makes dosing easier and more convenient. Hey, that was a good translation. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> good job, Google. All right, cool. So now on to the seating part. So we've moved up um, on seating to 154 pound capacity. Wow. Um, yeah, still serious. the three different augers, the three different augers, uh, the screw sizes on there. Mm -hmm. This guy's gonna run up to 617 pounds per minute of distribution. Wow. Insane. Holy cow. So right off the bat, one big difference I see is that this uses just a single auger and a single disc, whereas the all of the oh. current uh, XAG had models two. had two. Right. So Where's my other hand? Different. My other hand is over here. Oh, I was yeah. going like this for <laughs> a little bit different. Yeah, but it, it's a significantly it's, higher output. And it's that's a massive. Oh, so three. The, it, it's saying three types of augers. There's three screws, three fe three feeders, uh, but only one auger on it. Yep. Correct. Okay. And there's cool. three different size options, which is the same as what we have now. Yep. That's right. Man, that's moving a lot of product. All right. right. Cool. Uh, let's uh, let's keep scrolling down. Why don't we talk oh, yeah. about the speed? Yeah, so right. it's a good time one thing it. you'll you'll notice is the the, the maximum speed is listed at thirteen point eight meters per second, which right. is about thirty two miles per hour. Yeah, and that is the exact same maximum speed that we have currently on the P one hundred Pro, even the old P one hundred, and the upcoming DJI models like the T fifty and T sixty. Well, if Wonder it walks why. like a duck and it talks <laughs> like a duck, there must be a reason for that. Yes. So, so why would any manufacturer want to limit it's it's those a, speeds and to such a particular number? Right. So it also happens to be fifty kilometers per hour exactly, and that is a, a regulation from the Chinese domestic market ah. for agricultural spraying drones. Okay. So this is very interesting because it is going to limit the overall productivity of all of these drones coming right. from China. Wow. So the larger tank size may not necessarily benefit all users equally because right. of that maximum speed. That's limit. right. Because so to be able to maximize, to be able to take advantage of that increased capacity, you either have to increase SWAT, which we're seeing is not going to be increased, or significantly increased battery life, which these are running with the same battery capacity. A new, some new improvements and updates right. to the cooling system of the batteries, but other than that, they're the same. They will be cross convertible or cross compatible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too much tequila in my in my uh, <laughs> so, my soda can over there. Uh, but they will be cross compatible with folks that have existing XAG batteries, right. which is awesome. We love that XAG went that route. So. Um, so really, unless you're at flow rates above about three gallons per acre, this added capacity isn't really going to help much because you're still going to limit, you're still limited to how fast you can go and your swath and your battery life, which means you will end up having, yeah, sure, you've got 15.8 gallons on board, but you can only fly so fast and spread so wide. So you're likely going to run out of battery before you've emptied that tank. So again, those higher application rates are really going to see massive leaps and bounds in productivity on a machine like this, but not for most folks doing 
bunch of side on corn. Right, right. It, it will make a big difference when you run those higher uh, yep. application rates and gallons per acre yep. above three to four gallons per acre. That's right. Okay. Because of the higher output rate of the pumps. So I think in that case, you know, and the, the, we'll wrap this up here. Um, I think that really, you know, folks are going to be wondering, should I wait until the P150, right? Now, we already know. Whoa, look at that. Oh, I'm showing you this. Yet. Oh, what is this? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, well, hang on. We'll come back to that. Sorry, part I went down a little too far. Um, so this drone is also marketed as a uh, payload uh, drone. It, it carries carry. bananas. It can Whoa. carry bananas. Now, this will be very interesting in the U.S. Will this be available? I'm not sure. Right. It will require a completely different set of certifications with the FA and a different type of licensing. That's right. That's right. So that's wow. something to consider. Fascinating. I'm always really surprised by aircraft that are able with its autopilots to carry a slung payload because mm -hmm. it really changes the dynamics of the aircraft and how it's behaving when there's right. something heavy hanging below and swinging as you fly. Yep. Um, so that'll be really fascinating. It's still saying it'll carry 65 kilograms and still hustle Same at 13.8 meters per second. My yeah. God. Yeah. Wow. Pretty cool. And there's, it looks like there's a couple of different options. There's a, like a, a winch and a, a basket. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love it. How cool. A tree. You can oh, carry a shoot. tree. I'm going to get one of these for my house. <laughs> there right, you cool. go. <laughs> That's Pretty great. Cool system. That's and really awesome. Also, let's not forget the DJI T60 is also being marketed in the same yeah, way. Yeah, you can really tell there's this real trend with both of them really moving in the same direction. I love the multi purpose of both of those flagships, right? Being able to carry multiple things, spray, seed, now transport. They already both map. Mm -hmm. This is really exciting. Right. So cool. they, this also okay. does have onboard mapping, which great. DJI has been doing for a little while, which yep. is great. So it's built in. Yep. The software looks like a different version than what we're currently using. It does look a little uh, different. It's a little yep. bit different. Right. It seems like so far has about the same kind of capabilities. I think it's just improved. It does also have a new flight control system. This is version 5 of the Super X4. You mean, hang on, remote. scroll up. You mean we're empowering agriculture drones' strongest brain. Strongest mm. brains, Super X4. Super yeah. X5. Oh, 5, sorry. 4 oh, is the current. Come model. on. There All right. Go. Strongest brain. Look at this. 10 times the computing power of wow, the previous that's incredible. generation. incredible. Holy cow. That's amazing. That's a lot. Yeah. So with that also comes, um, Ooh, look at this. Off, avoid obstacles at full speed now. Yep. Wow, up to 15 to 100 meters away. Yeah. Whoa. So it does have a new style um, uh, radar system. I think it has a vision camera on there now too. You can kind of see it in the yep. picture. Yep. So they're they're doing a lot of improvements to this. Scroll back up. Check this out. Now this is a rare thing. A little further up. This is this should not look. If you're a good pilot, this should not happen to you. But this has a visual module that's going to record the the dynamics and the image of what the takeoff position looked like. Mm -hmm. And when it comes back to land, if that takeoff position that it's about to land on doesn't look the same, i.e., your dog is there, mm -hmm. then it won't land. Uh, and that's pretty brilliant. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Now, a good, a good pilot would ensure that their landing area is clear anyway, but still, nice nice gives some extra safeguards there. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah, that's I, pretty cool. I didn't catch that. That's now, I do cool. know that they've, XAG, in an attempt to um, to streamline, uh, sorry, I should have put my phone on silent. I'm terrible fired. at this. Yeah, I'm fired. <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. Um, so, uh, XAG has, has moved to a new kind of composite um, prototype on these frames. Um, I, 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 what I've heard through the grapevine is that they're less robust, but not, it's not like in a bad way. It's just that they're not as excessively engineered as the old body types will be. I think that's allowing them to be lighter, stronger, um, but less kind of complex in their design, it sounds like. And you can see some of that, granted, this is a render, so it's like hard to tell, but um, but that's one of the things we've always loved about XAG is their really, really robust um, build quality. There it is, brand new body structure, right. stable and reliable. Right. It looks like 60 it's, inch props. It's going to be built a little bit, uh, maybe more lightweight. Um, yep. It's. I think. I think it's still going to be very robust, and uh, right. we'll, we'll do some videos in the future showing Heck some yeah. of the testing videos that we saw. Oh man, that's right. Yeah, watch out for that, y'all. Subscribe yeah. if you haven't yet, because we're going to release some other videos um, where these are crashed on purpose mm -hmm. at full speed into poles, like telephone poles. Yeah. And then they're rebuilt uh, and uh, there's a whole dissection of all the parts that were replaced and how simple, like all that, it's really brilliant.
So now we got 60 inch props, so even Five bigger foot. than the um, 55 inch props that we currently yep. have. That's even right. Larger. I notice also the batteries are now mounted in the center versus yeah. the back. So yeah, that's kind smart. Of interesting. Yep. It's still foldable like our, our P100 Pros, yep. so that's great. It looks like it folds down really small. Do yep. payload options. Love it. Of course, it's waterproof. So all the stuff we love. Here's a new app. Um, looks like it's got, honestly, most of the same types of features right. that we currently have already. Right. Teamwork. Um, it does say it's compatible with Android and iOS, which I'm very excited about. So. If y'all have tried using the app on an iPhone, it is dog doo-doo. Yeah, it needs and some work. It needs the a lot of work. Version. Now, the current version. Now, whenever you're watching this video, maybe mm -hmm. it's changed by then. Hopefully, it's changed. But, but I would put a big old asterisk after that compatible right. with iOS and be like, if, if you don't mind that it's look at this it's got a dog it looks crap. like the picture's not loading but it looks like it's got a dark mode for Ooh, working at, working night. at night Come interesting on. which wow. is a, actually i never thought about them we haven't operated at night right. but the app is all white so i can see true. how that could be that's um, smart yep uh yeah very cool awesome very neat all right well let's wrap this up so yep. folks can get back to whatever they were doing before oh ah oh, shoot there's so much all right hang on <laughs> hang on there's more by the way there's more Different remotes. Okay, that's pretty cool. So they have a single hand controller yep. with a joystick now. Yep. They also have one with a built-in screen that everybody's been asking hey. about. Yep. It looks like it's going to have significantly improved. You spoke view. and we've listened. Yeah, cameras. Okay. All right, now All let's talk stuff. about this. So some folks are like just dead set on they want a device built in, right? Because they've gotten that from DJI. They love it from DJI. I love it from DJI. And the consequence, the trade-off there is you get crappy battery life down to four-ish hours less than that, depending on, oh, like, on the DJI, DJI's under like two, two. Yeah, yeah, two hours on the DJI. So they're quoting five, so I would say four. Um, so that's your trade-off, right? You don't have to go and buy another tablet or have it on your phone or anything like that. But I, what I really like about this approach is they're giving you the option of both. If you want to keep rocking the tablet you already have or the, or the uh, Android phone that you already have, keep rocking that and use the controller that we just saw above. Um, but if you want that all-in-one screen, XAG's answering the call 12 now. 12 hour battery life. I know, on come one. on, that's what I love about that. Yeah. And I also like not having to have, I mean, personally, when I use my Pixel, um, I like being able to go home and do whatever I want. If I wanna look at flight plans or whatever, I don't have to have the remote control with me. Yeah. And I can do that right now on, on this approach, but I, I wouldn't do that if I had the all-in-one, I'd have to have that with me. Couple more things. This is the uh, uh, a data link uh, well, extender, so well. range extender. Yeah. So like DJI is good. Like DJI and something that we've definitely encountered with XAG that we yep. want. Yeah. Um, and some new battery technology. Uh huh. So they look very similar. The chargers, right. the standard chargers are the same. It's the same yeah. current charger with the thirteen six hundred and the GC four thousand charger. Yeah. Um, but the batteries use, uh, this new style battery uses an evaporative cooling system. So it uses like air and air water, conditioner. like an air Whoa, conditioner, like a, like a swamp cooler. Yep. So that's going to make it a lot less messy. Um, and oh, the batteries man. are also rated for a little bit, um, faster charging time, uh, a little bit higher 1500 cycle cycles. By the way, that's called a battery fog cold box. Yes. That's just to let you know right. if you wondered what that was called. It's a battery fog cold box. Okay, some good things about that, real quick, is that um, one of the concerns about the liquid cooling right now is that you should assume that your pesticide has gotten onto the aircraft and has gotten onto the batteries. Then those batteries go in present day, go into, okay, I really need to silence that phone. <laughs> the batteries go into the liquid cooling uh, and then now your pesticide is in that liquid, in the water, right? So this actually keeps those batteries dry That's on right. the outside and is literally air conditioning them. That's right. I also noticed that it said, it quotes that being able to charge those in eight minutes. Eight minutes. Yep. Holy cow. Yep. And there's actually a few more new style charging systems. Yep. So there's actually one that's designed to connect to an it's electric EVs. vehicle. Come on. And I think this is designed to connect to a solar like energy storage. Whoa, center. bad, bad butt, bad, yeah. bad. I can't cuss because of Google. YouTube. Yeah. We'll, get we'll get canceled. We'll get banned. Oh, I don't want to get canceled. No. Come on. <laughs> yeah, new energy vehicle charging. That's a whole other so topic. Yeah. A lot of really interesting uh, new styles of love charging. It. So I love it. That's really about it. That's what we know so cool. far. That's and right. Again, things may change before we get them. But they will. We should just assume, assume that they, they will. will. And, and, and we should know that not all of these features will probably land stateside with us so right. um so let's talk about who this is for because folks are going to be you know folks that are looking to buy today 
right? It's this isn't even a question um, because you know you should consider this on your next aircraft purchase after the one that you're already planning to buy now. Um, you know, this might be your second or third or fifth drone or whatever. But um, I think that folks that aren't ready to buy that are thinking later this year, then obviously, yeah, this will be the new model by then, and and you should go with this. But um, I would also even then, if you're spraying below three gallons per acre, you're not going to see a lot of perks on this. Mm -hmm. um, you're it's really not. More, it's right? and it's going to be more expensive. We know that. Um, so I think, you know, in in comparison to the P100 Pro, you know, you already saw some kind of cap outs on productivity for those lower application rates, those lower volumes. So keep that in mind too. Uh, and again, you know, as far as right now, this is, uh, I don't know, this is pie in the sky. This is a fairy tale right now, because until it comes to the U.S., until it's got all of its approvals, this is just a good idea for right now. You <laughs> know, right. this is uh, fake news for right now. <laughs> right. Um, it's all so CGI. It's all CGI. Yeah. So right. just keep that in mind as y'all are you know, watching this video that, um, that nothing's set in stone about this. We just wanted to give you a quick preview of what we've seen on it and uh, what we've learned about it. And, um, yeah, ask us what questions you have in the comments, you know, throw in your thoughts and feedback and, um, any experience that you've had so far with your XAG platforms, good or bad, you know, um, open door policy here, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited about the evolution of both platforms, the DJI side of the house and right. XAG as, as most of y'all know that are watching this in our company, uh, is the only one that, that sells both of those those products side by side and I love that because it has us be really unbiased and we can just talk real straight up about the things we love and don't love um, and there's that standoff video from a couple weeks ago that if you haven't check seen that out. check that out yeah um, anything else you'd say about this Simon no if you're in a country then that is testing this drone and you have any experience with it oh, please yeah. let us know I'd yeah. love to hear more about absolutely. it absolutely yes 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 all right thanks for watching thanks, catch y'all later thank you Bye.